Well, actually, in Colorado, there will never be a time when there isn't a drought in, in a certain sense. I mean, there, there are a lot of people out there who wish the world were different than it was. Lots of people wish that we could drive cars that didn't require fuel and live in homes that didn't require wood and, uh, I don't know, and he's eat, in, eat he's food that doesn't require farming. But that's not the world we're privileged to live in. You cannot live anywhere here in Colorado or anywhere else without water. Uh, not just for, for drinking, but for growing food and producing products and creating the prosperous economy that we depend on. All of that requires the use, not just the fact that there's water in the snow. But it requires our ability to use that water, to get it out of the snow and put it in our faucets. And if we can't do that, uh, it, you know, people, people may think it sounds like an exaggeration, but there literally wouldn't be life in the West unless we had this system of water laws and the system of water storage and delivery that, that our state depends on. Those who have been around Colorado politics long enough know the saying, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. One of those guys who's been involved in a lot of those fights is Greg Walsher, who was the head of our Department of Natural Resources uh, under Bill Owens. That's right. You did some amazing stuff, including getting um, uh, endangered species repopulated in Colorado. It was really a, an amazing time that uh, uh, nobody else really did it that way. Well, it's, it, ought, it ought to be done. It's important. If we think something is in danger of extinction, we ought to do something about it. Instead of just regulating land use to death, we ought to actually recover the species. In other words, if, if we have too few of this species of fish, let's breed those let's fish. Let's have some more. Let's go get some more. Right. Yeah, that's great. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about water. You've worked, in the, you've worked into, in the capital enough. Um, there's a there's a poem in the Capitol that really has grabbed uh, your heart and mind. What is it? Uh, yeah, in fact, the, the title of this of uh, this publication we're working on with Independence Institute is "Where Life Is Written in Water," which is a quote from the poem uh, by Thomas Horns, Hornsby Farrell that adorns the series of murals around the rotunda of the Colorado State Capitol. It is the only state capitol in America um, whose whose rotunda is decorated with art designed specifically to call attention to an issue, in this case, the issue of water. Uh, and where life is written in water is an apt description of Colorado because there isn't life in a place like Colorado unless you figure out a way to put water to beneficial use. And our, our uh, ancient system of water law in Colorado makes that possible and thereby makes life in this state possible and I it wouldn't know be that, without it. I didn't know that about the rotunda. I, I know the pictures. I've, I've walked by the paintings and murals a million times, but I had no idea. I didn't put it together that this was about an issue. Uh, water, water is what created Colorado as a state. You, you so it's an interesting dynamic in Colorado because as, as it is referred to often as the rooftop state because all of the water that falls on Colorado flows out of Colorado. None of it flows in. And it's the only state other than Hawaii for which that's true. Uh, and in Colorado, uh, more than half of all the water that falls in Colorado is legally obligated to, for use in other states uh, and even in Mexico under international treaties and interstate compacts and so on. Uh, so we're not even allowed to use all the water that, that originates in Colorado, only a fraction of it. Uh, and in a state like this where 80% of the water comes seasonally in the form of snow, you have to capture it during the wet periods when it's running off the mountains or there won't be any there in the late summer. And the history books are filled with examples of what we now think of as significant rivers like the South Platte, where people walked across it uh, without touching water in the old days before there were dams and reservoirs and systems for using that water. I, I want to get into the issue of water storage, but first of all, I want to talk about Colorado's water law, which um, isn't wildly complex in theory. Uh, it has a lot of moving moving parts, but... It is elegant in that we have property rights for water. That is, people, um, when you're first in, you were able to get property rights or buy property rights. The city of Denver has purchased water rights, which means they will never go dry. Boulder has more... Unless... Unless... Unless somebody who has senior water rights to theirs in a particularly dry year... Um, the, the, see, the Colorado water law, as you say, is not terribly complicated theoretically. The state constitution, as most western states, has a very simple provision. If you can take water out of its natural stream and put it to beneficial use, which is clearly defined, you may not be stopped. You have developed a property right in doing that. And the only exception to that is unless somebody else was there first. So under the prior appropriation system, it's, it's all about 
whose water rights are older. Um, and, and because without that, uh, there simply wouldn't be any water anywhere else other than where all the people in Colorado, 80% of the water falls west of the Continental Divide and 80% of the people live east of it. So that creates an us against them kind of struggle that will never end in this state. Our late senior fellow in uh, water law was uh, Craig Green, and he did a wonderful paper comparing, you know, how, do, how do you think of water that moves as a property right? It's here, and now it's over there. And he, he basically called them wild horses. They're running horses. <laughs> and, and you have property rights. But if somebody downstream has a senior right, you're not allowed to suck out the water if it means he can't get his. And so we have a whole bunch of enforcement and water courts. And, um, and it's, it's a difficult concept, especially for people in the East, where their yeah. primary issue is how to get rid of, the, of too much water. But we live um, and here, in, and we you live don't in a actually desert. own the water itself. The water of the state belongs to the people of the state. What you own as a property right is the right to use it. And you have the right to use it in a very clearly defined location, amount, and purpose. Uh, and if you want to change any of that, you've got to go back to the water courts and prove that you're not injuring anybody else's water right to do that. And so uh, we've developed over a long period of time a way that guarantees that there is farming in Colorado and there's uh, cities in Colorado and everything in between. And, and without farming, the system of water law, none of that would exist. Yeah, we, we, we've taken this barren desert and have made it f fruitful. Made I it mean, bloom, it, yes. We made it bloom. It's, it's amazing how much food and livestock survive and are grown here in Colorado because we have water. So when I was growing up here in Colorado, there was 1.3 million people in the state. Now it's pushing 6 million people. That's a lot of thirsty tongues uh, for, for our water. But fortunately, it snows every year and we get fresh Mountain Rocky Mountain water, so Coors can can make their make their brew, and uh, that's all beautiful. Thank heaven for that. Thank heaven for doing God's work. <laughs> um, but I keep hearing all the time that we're in drought, always in drought. Doesn't matter if we've had record snowfall, we're in drought. Uh, this is drought. There's another year for drought. Uh, what gives? Well, actually, in Colorado, there will never be a time when there isn't a drought in, in a certain sense. I mean, there, there are a lot of people out there who wish the world were different than it was. Lots of people wish that we could drive cars that didn't require fuel and live in homes that didn't require wood and, uh, I don't know, and eat, them. eat <laughs> food that doesn't require farming. But that's not the world we're privileged to live in. You cannot live anywhere here in Colorado or anywhere else without water. Uh, not just for, for drinking, but for growing food and producing products and creating the prosperous economy that we depend on, all of that requires the use, not just the fact that there's water in the snow, but it requires our ability to use that water, to get it out of the snow and put it in our faucets. And if we can't do that, uh, you know, people, people may think it sounds like an exaggeration, but there literally wouldn't be life in the West unless we had this system of water laws and the system of water storage and delivery that, that our state depends on. Is it fair to say, um, your old joke about beer, is you don't buy beer, you, you just rent it. Um, in the same way, you don't really waste water. You can misuse water. It's not being used for its highest capacity, but we get water near its first use. And uh, then we it do, goes- We do, but wasting water is illegal in Colorado too. I mean, part of our elaborate system of, of water law, the, the theory behind it, as we said, is simple. But the details get more and more complicated for reasons like that. You're not allowed to speculate in water. You can't file on water rights unless it is clearly demonstrated that you have the ability uh, to put it to use, not just the desire to. You're not allowed to uh, use water to the point that it, that it diminishes the quality to the point that someone else can't use their, their water right downstream. Um, you're, you're, you're not allowed to waste water in any way. So if your water decrease as you're entitled to X amount of water because that's what it takes to irrigate X amount of acres and so on, you can't use more water than that and just put it out there and, and waste it. So that's why Colorado has done such a great job of retrofitting uh, systems in farming and cities and everything in between for making sure that we can serve water properly, that we don't use more than is necessary for, for that purpose. Perfect. It's a requirement Casey, as it should be. If people are real old timers in Denver, they might remember when there was no water meter that you paid yes. a flat fee, whether you used three drops or a million gallons. It was uh, a sore subject to people in my native western slope for many years. because they, they had systems like that, that was, long before Denver did. Right. Uh, but, but Denver's done all of that. I mean, they've, they, they now have uh, 
some people call them three flush toilets. I call them low flow toilets, <laughs> but uh, the uh, retrofitting of, of shower heads and dishwashers and everything in between. We've done a great job all over this state of, of doing our best oh, to conserve great. the limited resource. Then we're set. We're fine. We don't need to do anything else. We can conserve our way into prosperity when it comes to water. Well, would that it were true. The problem is other people in the country have found out about Colorado and they keep moving here. And so our cities uh, continue to grow. And as you said, the population is, is uh, many factors bigger than it was when we were young. Only three times the size And um, you can't, there's no, there's no easy way in a, in a free society to keep people from moving where they want to move. So as long as people keep coming here and as long as the Southwest continues to be the fastest growing region of America, someone's going to supply water to all those people one way or another. And so our system of water law is enormously important in protecting us against uh, the, even, the even greater threats. The two huge ones that Colorado will always face, one is federal control of the water and the other is California. Uh, and we've got a, we, have, we have systems in place to guard against threats from any direction as long as we understand the importance of those systems, the importance of our water laws and the importance of, of uh, hanging on and fighting that battle. And every generation has to fight it all over again. Well, talk to me about storage because... The snow falls and it goes into wonderful lakes and we, then we take the water from the lakes. We don't need to build dams. Nature has already made all the dams we need. Well, we, had, we have all the dams that we need in this state to supply all the water needed by a fifth of the people who live here. So there, there is literally, there is not enough storage in any, Colorado has eight major river basins yeah. and there is not enough storage in any of the eight to hold all of the water to which Colorado is entitled under these interstate compacts. So we're, so we're stop, losing. Stop, stop, stop there for a second. So you're telling me that we're, by all the interstate compacts, all the agreements we have, federal, uh, state, all, all the rest, we could be holding on to a lot more water than we are and still fulfill all the obligations and build up a, a, a bank, if you will, of water that, that we need. That's, that's correct. Now, I know that, that uh, there are lots of people in the state who maintain that there is no more available water because global warming has changed the amount of snow and so on. Uh, I'm not an expert on climate change, but I can tell you under the interstate compacts, the, the biggest one by far being the Colorado River, that's the largest source yeah. of water in this state, Colorado is entitled under that deal to a million acre feet a year more than it's using. All of the other states are using their entitlement. There are seven states in the Colorado River Basin with 40 million people dependent on water in that, in that basin. All of them are using their entire entitlement. California is using way more than theirs and always has. They have a series of legal agreements that Colorado forced 20 years ago uh, that is ratcheting down their entitlement, and Colorado is entitled to ratchet up to the amount of water it's allowed under those compacts. We're not doing that because we're not building the storage and the facilities it would take to hold that water. Why aren't we building the storage facilities? I remember... Uh, when you were in office, uh, Governor Bill Owens put in, I think it was uh, Proposition A or uh, Amendment A, I forget what it was, and it was the only thing that failed in every county in the state, and it was to uh, spend some money to build water it, it allowed It would have allowed the bonding of, right. of projects, the same as we've done with highways and other big infrastructure projects. It became a, a huge controversy in the state for the same reason that water will always be a big controversy. All sorts of people viewed it as a possible way f that Denver might steal all the water from the rest of the state or that somebody else might divert more water over the, over the divide. Or something. All of those are always controversial issues in this state and always will be. Unless people absolutely trust what projects are going to be built and where they're going to be built and who benefits and all of that, uh, there's a there's a skepticism built into it that I just think won't won't ever go away. The result of that, unfortunately, is that no water projects have been built since then. And our population keeps growing, the demand keeps growing, and we cannot. Are you saying we cannot conserve ourselves to a point where we'll always have enough water? At some point, we're going to have a crisis because we don't have enough places to store the water. Because the population continues to grow, so you you need additional water all the time. That, that doesn't eliminate the need for conservation. And as I say, we've done, we've done great work in Colorado that way. That doesn't mean it's all done. There's still more that can be done and should be done. So we ought to be encouraging conservation at every stage. And any time anyone thinks of a new way to do that, we should do it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the, that the need for more water is just simply going to go away. I mean, during my lifetime, I remember proposals where the, 
they used to want to build giant pipelines from the Columbia River and, and bring water down from that far away just wow. because there's lots of it there. And that's not going to happen, obviously, nor should it. But yeah, in Colorado, seems- there's, there's, there's all sorts of ways you can store more water without building big new dams. There's a lot of dams in Colorado where the capacity can be enlarged, either by, uh, and Hickenlooper even talked about this, either by enlarging the dam just slightly or by dredging out the bottom, which have filled up with silt in lots of different reservoirs. You can drastically increase the amount of storage without building new dams. And in the case of existing ones, politics have already been fought over years ago. So those are fairly easy to do. You can build underground storage in a lot of places where you don't have any evaporation kind of problems. Uh, the largest water project being built in California is an underground storage facility. So there's, there's plenty of other options besides you're, you're just talking, building dams. like dance. aquifers and, and places that can store water. Yes. It's fascinating. I never even thought about uh, dredging out uh, uh, what the silt that's come in. There's, there's another part of this in that environmentalists want clean energy. And the cleanest and most renewable <laughs> form of energy is hydroelectric um, and but they don't want to build the dams or improve the dams to be able to provide that. I, I haven't figured it. I haven't there figured are, it all. There are out. places where you can retrofit existing dams with hydropower facilities that weren't part of the original construction. They did that on Ridgeway Reservoir, in fact, just a few years ago. So now there's power being generated where there was just water running down the stream. Completely clean, renewable power. It's it's the most renewable source of energy that there is, as you say, um, and arguably the most dependable if you. If you impound some water, then you've always got water to run through the turbines, where with uh, solar or wind power, they're, they're intermittent depending on the weather. Let's finish it with this, this question. So um, get back to your beautiful quote um, that Colorado's water... Where life is written in water, yes. Life is written in water. You did a wonderful uh, study for Independence Institute. The biggest takeaway from that is, is what? Uh, I think the biggest takeaway from it is that that Coloradans uh, now and into future generations have to figure out ways to store additional water and to conserve additional water. And in order to do that, we have to resist all efforts to repeal Colorado's uh, historically important system of water law. And there are plenty of efforts out there to do that. There are lots of people who, th- who think it's just an antiquated idea that water is property and uh, – we ought to just stop this nonsense. And in fact, lots of people out there advocating uh, free and open markets so the water can be bought and sold by, by the highest bidder. And of course, if that happens, there won't be any water in most of Colorado because all the money is in California and New York and Chicago and to some degree maybe Denver. But there certainly wouldn't be any water in Montrose if it were for sale to the highest bidder. Property rights is free market. And that's what we have right now is a, a property rights system for, for water and it has served us well. Now it's time to make sure there's more water for us to, to use. Exactly. Hey, Greg, right. thanks for everything you do for us. Thank you. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button, too. You don't want to miss a single show.